your master teacher of chemistry at Tuedantu. And yes, today's topic is how to predict the product of a chemical reaction. Wait, wait, wait. Of course, I'll give you some tips. But before that, there is there are few things which you have to know. One is how to write a chemical formula, so which you guys have already studied in 9th standard. And if students who are from class 9, we have already discussed about it, right? That is the crisscross method. So you need to interchange the valencies and ignore the charge. The uh, atom with positive valency has to be written first and then followed by the negative valency. I hope you remember. So that is one thing which is very, very important because if you don't know how to write the chemical formula, then predicting the products will be really difficult. And charge on polyatomic ion. So if it is, see, determining the valency, of the elements is easy you know we have a method that you know depending on the number of valence electrons we can figure out the number of its valence you also but what about the polyatomic ions that is something you guys have to memorize okay so with practice of course you don't have to you know uh, mug it up or uh, uh, you know, memorize it because you know cyanide CN minus ammonium NH4 plus sulfate SO4 minus 2. So it will be just you know it will be there, it will be stored in your head, but you have to practice a lot for that. That is another thing which is very very important. Then is balancing of chemical equations. So predicting the products is something which I'll teach you today, but balancing is something we have already learned. So you have to know how to balance the chemical equation. Do not worry, today we'll balance these equations too. So, shall we start? Okay, let's do it. So, very, very important thing is you have to know the type of reaction. See, the first chapter, chemical reactions and equations, may we have learned what are the types of reactions, right? So, maybe, you know, if you see uh, one product on heating, what will happen? So, it's a decomposition reaction. If you see an acid base reacting together, it's a neutralization reaction. So, a metal salt with another metal so it's a displacement reaction the first and foremost thing which you have to do is identify the type of reaction so this is a combination reaction see whenever two elements are combining whenever two elements are combining see this is also molecule of an element right oxygen this is not a compound whenever two elements are combined children it's always a combination reaction and you will end up getting only one product because what else can you get? Mg plus O2. You cannot write it as O2 plus Mg. Hey no? So they have to, they will combine and end up getting a, will end up getting a single product. And what is it? For that you have to know the, how to write chemical formula. Mg, covalency A plus 2 and oxygen is minus 2. So it will be MgO. And if you have to balance it, on the LHS we have 2 oxygen, on the RHS we have only 1, so multiply it by 2, so here also it will 2. 2 Mg plus O2, you are getting 2 MgO. See what I have did, if you have 2 elements, if 2 elements are combining, so it will be always a combination reaction and you will end up getting a single product. Let's do one more, C plus O2. Two elements combining, so it's a combination reaction, it will be CO2. Hannah, CaO plus H2O, is this a combination reaction? Calcium oxide plus water, no it is not a combination reaction. So what will you get here? Calcium oxide when it is reacting with water or whenever the metal oxides are dissolved in water, so yes, See, there are two types of combination reaction. You might be wondering, oh, this is a molecule. No, it's not a combination reaction. But here, what are you going to get? You will get CaOH twice. Calcium hydroxide. So when metallic oxides are dissolved in water or made to react with water, you will end up getting their alkalis, which is CaOH twice. Right? And is it balanced? Let's see. Calcium air, ache, and on the RHS, we have one. And O, O2, and hydrogen 2. So yes, it is a combination reaction. So please be very careful. So yes, in the last step I taught you, when whenever two elements are combining, it's always a combination reaction. So as soon as we saw, we were like, ah, oh, this is not a combination reaction. But in fact, yes, it is a combination reaction. Metallic oxides. So many metallic, most of the metallic oxides are insoluble in water. But if they do dissolve, then you will end up getting their hydroxides, which in case here it is calcium hydroxide at the CaOH twice. Cool. Next is decomposition reaction. See, metal carbonates. Why am I 
am I not able to write? I'm so sorry. Okay. Okay. So metal carbonates, whenever they are heated, see it's a single reactant, okay, metal carbonates. And what is the first general product? General product will be carbon dioxide. Okay, carbon dioxide to will be released. So metal carbonate and what will be remaining? CO2 gaya. So what will be remaining? Calcium oxide. Hey na? So the ulta reaction also you will know now. Calcium oxide plus CO2. What will you get? Calcium carbonate. See CaCO3 when heated, it will undergo the decomposition reaction where you will end up getting carbon dioxide and a metallic oxide. See whenever they are carbonates, whenever metal carbonates are heated, the first product has to be carbon dioxide. And the one more will be metal, metal oxide. Maybe it is uh, Na2CO3. What might be the products? Carbon dioxide plus sodium oxide. That is it. Okay. Okay. Next is displacement reaction so we have already studied about the reactivity series right so reactivity series is very very important because sometimes you know they will ask you is this reaction possible or not in order to say in order to answer that question you have to know where is that element where is that metal in the reactivity series so this is the reactivity series right potassium sodium calcium magnesium aluminium carbon is also there hydrogen is also there zinc iron lead hydrogen copper mercury silver gold so if a metal is below whatever the x metal in the reactivity series then it won't be able to displace x from its solution if it is above yes it can definitely displace x from its salt or compound now the question is displacement reaction iron plus copper sulfate see what is displacing you have to replace it so iron will replace copper that is it so what should be the reaction? One product to copper hoga because it has been kicked out. So what should be the other product? Is it FeSO4, Fe2SO4, FeSO4 thrice? So that will be thoda sa confusing, right? So write it down. Fe2 plus SO4 minus 2. So you will get FeSO4. Copper will be in the solid state and FeSO4 in the aqueous state. So this is what is the displacement reaction. Copper plus zinc now. So copper, can copper displace zinc sulfate? That is the question. So let's go back to reactivity series. Where is copper? Copper is here and zinc is here. So of course zinc is more reactive than copper. So we can conclude that this reaction is not possible, right? So no reaction will be the right answer. So what? Whenever you have a metal salt and a metal, okay or maybe carbon is also possible so an element generally usually it will be a metal and a metallic salt so what type of reaction will it be it will be a displacement reaction to answer that you have to know the reactivity series whether this metal can displace the other metal from its solution or not and coming to the double displacement reaction. So displacement reaction is kind of easy because one metal is replacing another. So one will be in the solid form and the other one will be in the aqueous solution. But here you are supposed to get two products. And both are compounds. So how to do it? So very simple. So nearest. So this sulfate and this Ba will come down. Those are the nearest one. SO4 plus Ba. Okay? That's it. You just write this one. It will work out for all the double displacement reactions. Just two half square or whatever you can call it as. See, BaSO4 plus NaCl. Those are the products, right? So what I have done. So obviously Ba with positive valency, it has to be written first and then a sulfate. So Ba plus 2, SO4 minus 2. So plus 2 plus 2 here. So BaSO4 and NaCl, Na plus Cl minus but has this reaction been balanced no so for that it has to be balanced so you have NaCl BaSO4 plus NaCl so BaSO4 will be in the form of white precipitate NaCl will be in the form of its aqueous solution and you need to balance the equation so one more AgNO3 plus NaCl you will get AgCl plus NaNO3 again 
So this half square. Na in O3 because we cannot write NO3 Na. So Na is plus 1, NO3 is minus 1. Right? So just do the crisscross method. It, as it's plus 1, minus 1, you will end up getting Na in O3, which will be in the aqueous form. Then is AgCl. AgCl, so which is a precipitate, so it will be in the solid form. Bus. So whenever it is this double displacement reaction but because it you will know right so there are two different salts metal salts AgNO3 silver nitrate and sodium chloride so just write down these two half squares that is Na will combine with NaNO3 nitrate and silver will combine with chloride to give you silver chloride then there's neutralization reaction see neutralization reaction where one thing is you will always get salt and water as the products so first write down water this formula everyone knows right so now h o h is gone water as water right so what will be left out any acl henna so take one more example you take any neutralization reaction okay hno3 plus ea oh twice h2o okay it's gone then what should you get you should get cano3 twice because H and oxygen are gone. But NO3 is a polyatomic ion, right? So you cannot separate it. So nitrate will be one ion. It's a polyatomic ion. So water plus calcium nitrate will be the product, right? So see, uh, as I told you, whenever you heat a carbonate, you will end up getting carbon dioxide. You take any hydroxide, for example, MgOH twice which is a hydroxide, heat it. So what will you get is, you will get water. Water will be evaporated and what will be left out? Magnesium oxide. So whenever carbonates are heated, carbon dioxide will be liberated. Whenever hydroxide, metallic hydroxides are heated, water will be evaporated. So these are the some things which you have to know. So only when you can recognize the type of reaction, so predicting the products will be very, very, very easy. That is, you know, whenever two elements are combining, that will be the combination reaction. So obviously, what else can you get? You need to just add them up and get a product, right? And in case, but in case of CaO plus CO2, you will get calcium carbonate, which is also a combination reaction. So this is it. And next is combustion reaction. See, whenever whenever you heat hydrocarbons whenever you heat hydrocarbons only products formed are carbon dioxide and water bus hydrocarbons on burning or on combustion you will get only two products co2 plus h2o the only thing you have to do is balancing so we have four hydrogen only two hydrogen here now four o2 only two o2 CH4 plus 2O2, you will get CO2 plus 2H2O. This is what is the combustion reaction, right? So on burning hydrocarbons, you will get carbon dioxide and water as the product. That is it. This is how to predict the products in a chemical reaction. But as I told you, <clears throat> practicing is very, very important. So do practice and let me know was it helpful. So now are you guys confident about, you know, figuring out the products? in a chemical reaction just let me know in the comment section or if you are still facing difficulties just let me know thank you so much and if anyone wants to take up the pro subscription and wants to you know um, get rid of all their problems related to the online education just visit the link given in the description box choose your grade board and click on to the get subscription if you want if you need discount who, who will say no to that? So use the coupon code SURPRO for additional 20% discount from my side. Happy learning. So the link is in the description box and the coupon code is SURPRO. Thank you so much. And if you are here for the first time, do not forget to subscribe, like and share this video with your friends also. So even they will know how to predict the product in a chemical reaction in an easy peasy way. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Take care.